What's up guys, Jack here, and welcome back to the channel for my Texit server setup guide. So recently my girlfriend posted this TikTok of me showing off my home server. It got pretty popular and I received a ton of questions about different services I ran on the server. So I figured I'd start making some dedicated videos to help you guys get your home servers up and running. So today's topic is specifically around how I set up my modded Minecraft server for me and my friends to play on. Running a game server, specifically Minecraft, is a great use for an old laptop, old PC parts, or any old system you have laying around. And if you guys wanna see that full home server build, you guys can click on this video here. With that, let's show you guys how to set it up. Okay, so today we're going to be setting up our Minecraft server inside of Proxmox. Inside of here, you can create dedicated VMs to host your different services. The steps will be a little different if you're using another virtualization software like VMware, but I'm just walking you through the general resource allocation you should make. And if you guys are doing this on a separate PC, like a laptop that you just want to dedicate for your Minecraft server, feel free to skip ahead to this timestamp. So the first thing we're going to do is download our operating system from an ISO. Today we're going to be using X Ubuntu, which is a lightweight version of Ubuntu Linux. This is going to be perfect for running in the background on very little resources so that all of our dedicated resources can go towards hosting the server. To get an ISO, all we're going to do is come to this website, which I'll link in the description, and you can download a torrent file here, or you can click on your specific country, and then you can download the ISOs from here. And then back in Proxmox, we're going to go to our local PVE drive, ISO images, and then click upload. Select that file you just downloaded, and your Xubuntu ISO should be available here. So now we're going to go ahead and create the dedicated virtual machine. Go up to the top right to create VM. And for your VM ID, just start at 100 and work your way up. I already have 101, 102, and 103 occupied, so this is going to be 104. I'm just going to call this test server. If you want to start this server at boot, you can check this box here. But go ahead and hit next. And this is where we're going to pass in our ISO image. So select that storage where you just downloaded your ISO. So I downloaded mine on local. And then on the ISO drop down, you can see Xubuntu is available here. Go ahead and select that, and we can move on to the next screen. On the system page, feel free to just leave this as default and hit next. For our disks, this is what's gonna be used as a boot drive for our system. This local LVM is my M.2 drive. And then for the actual size, if you're running just vanilla Minecraft, 32 gig is plenty. For something like Texit 4 that has a lot of mods, I'd recommend bumping that up maybe to like 64. This will give you a lot of extra space in case new mods come out or you need to install any large updates. Go ahead and hit next. And then on the CPU screen, this is where we're gonna dedicate our cores. So I have an i7-6700K in my system. It has four cores and eight threads, but inside of Proxmox that shows up as eight cores due to hyper-threading. So I can go all the way up to eight in this selection screen here. For vanilla Minecraft, two should be plenty. If you're doing some modding, I'd definitely consider bumping this up to four. For my server specifically, I have six cores dedicated to it. I have multiple people playing on the server at the same time, and I want to provide a consistent experience for everyone. So I'm happy to dedicate the extra cores. After you make this selection, go ahead and hit next. And this is the memory screen where you're going to dedicate RAM to your server. Again, this is going to vary based on what version of Minecraft you're running. For vanilla, like four gigs is probably fine. But again, for my server, I want to provide a seamless experience. So I dedicated up to 16. To find out the megabytes here, you're just going to go ahead and multiply 1024 by the amount of gigs you want to dedicate. So I have 16 that I want to dedicate. So 1024 times 16. 16384, and that's the number we're going to input here. I have 32 gigs on my system, so I'm happy to dedicate this much RAM to the server. But obviously, this will vary based on what hardware you have installed. Go ahead and hit next, and then on the network screen, we're going to leave this all the same. Hit next, and then we can review our options here. Go ahead and click finish, and this is going to go ahead and create our virtual machine. Okay, so now you can see our test server is created over on the left hand side. We're going to go ahead and start up our machine for the first time. Click onto the console tab here, and you'll be greeted with the Xubuntu setup screen. From here, hit try or install Xubuntu. Hit enter and it's going to start loading the install screen. Once you boot into this screen, you're going to go ahead and click install Xubuntu, choose your language, select your keyboard layout, select your internet connection. I'm just wired into ethernet on my machine. I'd highly recommend wiring into ethernet if you have a separate system you're running this on. And then we're going to go to interactive installation. For this selection, I'll be walking you guys through how to do it with Xubuntu Minimal. This is going to remove a lot of the extra programs that come pre-installed with Xubuntu. But if you guys aren't super comfortable with the terminal, feel free to go with desktop here. It is going to consume some of your resources, but it should be a little bit easier to set up. I'm going to go ahead and skip this screen as well. And then we're going to do erase disk and install Xubuntu. Now this is where you're going to set your root user. And this is where you're going to set your user username and password, go ahead and hit next, select your time zone, and then it should say ready to install. Go ahead and click install in order to wait for this to finish up. While this is installing, here's a word from today's sponsor. Uh, there is no sponsor, it's just me. Once your install is done, you'll see this screen. Go ahead and click restart now. Okay, so once we reboot, we should see this screen. Go ahead and enter that password that you typed in earlier, and you should be brought to the Linux home screen. You can go over to summary and verify that all your hardware is allocated correctly. So you can see I have six CPU cores and 16 gigs of RAM, as well as 64 gigs dedicated to my boot drive. So now from here, we're ready to start setting up the actual Minecraft server. Since we picked minimal install, our version of Linux doesn't come with any browser or anything out of the box. So go ahead and open the terminal, and we're gonna type in sudo apt 
install Firefox. Enter your password. And I'm not a huge Firefox guy, but it is lightweight. It's a lot less RAM intensive than something like Chrome. So it's perfectly fine for just your home server. So after that installs, go ahead and go to the top left here and type in Firefox in the search bar and we should load straight in. So now from our browser, we're gonna to navigate to where we wanna download our server from. For a vanilla Minecraft server, you can just go to minecraft.net. But today I'm showing you guys how to run Texit, which is a Technic Pack server. So we're gonna to go to technicpack.net, go to mod packs at the top here, select your mod pack that you wanna use. Again, we're using Texit 4, so we're gonna go ahead and click this. And if you scroll down a little bit on this page, you can go ahead and click server download. Once that's completed, we can go ahead and close Firefox. Back in our terminal window, we're gonna CD into our downloads folder, so CD, downloads and then hit LS and you can see our zip is installed in this folder. So now we're just going to do unzip and you can start typing in the name of the folder 16.0 hit tab. It'll autofill for you and then hit enter and this will unpack our zip file into a folder. So now if we hit LS again, you can see that we now have a server folder as well as that zip file. Now I like to just move my server folder from download straight to my desktop so I don't accidentally delete it later on. So just go ahead into your downloads here and then just drag this onto your desktop. So we're still in downloads here. If we ls again we'll see that that folder was removed so we're going to cd dot dot to bring us back to the root directory and then cd into desktop now hit ls and you can see our text server on our desktop so there's a few modifications we're going to want to make we're going to go ahead and cd into the folder so again just start typing the name and then you can hit tab and it should auto complete for you if you type ls while we're inside of the server folder it should list all of these files today we're running on linux so we're going to be modifying this linux.sh file but if you're running on windows you can follow along with the .bat file here so feel free to use whatever text editor you want i'm just going to use nano and we're just going to type nano server linux.sh and this is gonna open that server Linux shell file in a text editor. So the only thing we're in here for is to change the amount of RAM dedicated to our server. If you look at this second part here, this XMX4G, this is the RAM dedicated to our server. Again, we dedicated 16 gigs to this virtual machine. So we can go ahead and change this four to 16 and that'll boost the amount of RAM that's allotted to our server. Go ahead and hit control O to save the file, hit enter, and then go ahead and hit control X to close out. We can also take a look at our server.properties file. So go ahead and type nano server.properties. This again will open it up in our text editor. In here, you'll be able to change all sorts of Minecraft specific things. A couple important things I wanna note, the default port for Minecraft is 25565. This is important to note when we port forward later to make our server available to our friends. There's th also things like difficulty settings, max players, things like allowing flight, our view distance, which I'm actually gonna change from 12 to 16 chunks, our server IP, which we're gonna leave blank for now, and our server port, as mentioned, 25565. There's a bunch of other settings in here as well. Feel free to scroll through these and change what you want, but Make sure after you're done, hit Control O to save the file, hit Enter, and then hit Control X to close out. So now we need to install Java to run our Minecraft server. Texit 4 is built on top of Minecraft 1.19, so that requires at least Java 17. But for your specific mod pack, this may vary, so just double check on your mod pack's website. Inside the terminal, we're gonna type sudo apt install open jdk-17 dash jdk just like that and then we're going to hit enter type y to continue and that's going to go ahead and install java for us now with java installed we have a fully functioning local minecraft server i can go ahead and run our server linux.sh with dot slash server linux.sh and this is going to start up our server for the first time so anyone connected to my network is going to be able to connect to this server so eventually you should see this done message when the server is fully up and running it's going to take a little bit longer the first time because it's generating a bunch of files as well as the world but on subsequent starts and restarts of the server it should be a lot faster and so now with our server running we're going to test our local connection go ahead and open a new terminal window type in ip space a hit enter, and this should tell you your local IP that you're gonna use to connect to your Minecraft server. So mine's listed right here after INET, and then it says the IP. I'm gonna take note of this, open up my Texit launcher, multiplayer, direct connection, paste in that address, and then join server. And with any luck, your server should be up and running. You can see I'm loaded in here. It's generating the world and all the chunks around me, so it's a little bit laggy right now. For our purposes though, we want our friends to be able to join our server, and that's gonna require us to configure some stuff on the network side, specifically port forwarding. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect, so I'm gonna close the server while we set up our networking. To close it, just go to the, your terminal and type in control C. And once this new line pops up in the terminal, your server is down. So a lot of people think port forwarding is a really complex process and it definitely used to be, but now it's typically pretty simple to do from your ISP's app or website. So this is gonna vary based on what ISP you have. I have Xfinity, so you're gonna have to do this from the mobile app. You're gonna to go to view Wi-Fi equipment, click on advanced settings, 
and then port forwarding is an option under advanced settings. Once this loads in, you're gonna click add port forward, select your virtual machine from the drop down here, mine was jack test, and then for the port number, we're gonna go ahead and type in 25565. I have that occupied by my current Minecraft server right now, so I'll just put in an example port. Go ahead and hit next, and that should save your port forward. And just like that, your network traffic will be routed from your public IP through your port into your Minecraft server. Okay, so now that you port forwarded, you can go ahead and start your server back up. CD back into your desktop folder, CD into your server folder, and then dot slash server Linux dot sh to start your server back up. Okay, now after your server's loaded, we're gonna go ahead and launch our Technic Launcher and we're gonna connect back to our server with that private IP that we set earlier. So for us, since we're on the same network on our client computer, we're gonna connect via the private IP. Our friends, however, though, are gonna connect via our public IP, and when they connect on that port that we set, 25565, that traffic's gonna get forwarded to the private server. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask my friend to join via my public IP, and to find your public IP, you can just go to whatismyipaddress.com, I'll leave a link below. So I'm gonna have my friend type in that public IP in his direct connection window, and he should load into our server. Bang. So you can see Nat813 join the game. If we want to flip back over to our Proxmox logs, we can see that there was a handshake between our client, Nat813, and our server, and that succeeded with no issues, and he connected to the server. A couple other things in here, if you want to op yourself, you can just go ahead and do op and then your name. So I'm the official jock. Bang. Made the official jock a server operator. And you can see right here, <laughs> as you just got killed by that zombie. Uh, my friend connected and joined to the server. Okay, so that was a pretty basic setup on how to get your multiplayer server up and running. I'm gonna show you guys a few things I'd recommend for your friends on the client side so that their experience is as smooth as possible. So if you're running Technic Launcher, something you can do is come into here into Launcher Options, and then underneath Java settings, you can set memory that you wanna to allocate to your instance of modded Minecraft. Texit 4, for example, has a ton of mods and it'll get both CPU and RAM intensive. This by default is set to like one or two gigs when you install Technic Launcher. So just make sure you bump this up. I would recommend at least four gigs if you're running Texit 4. You can see I have mine set to 12. I have a bunch of RAM in my system, so I don't mind locking up some resources for this. But just make sure to double check what your memory is set to. And if you're experiencing any performance issues, try changing this. Another thing I'd recommend specifically for mod packs that have a ton of mods like Texit, make sure you have your Techit folder installed on your fastest drive. If you have this loading from like a HDD, it's gonna take like 10 plus minutes to load Techit every single time. But loading this from an M.2 is a sub two minute process. Okay, so that was my guide on how to set up your Texit server. I'm really trying to focus on removing that perception of complexity that it takes to run a Minecraft server. People often get intimidated when they hear terms like port forwarding, but with modern technology, it's really simple. And if you followed along with this guide, you should be able to have your Minecraft server up and running within an hour. If you guys run into any issues or have any questions, feel free to link them below. Again, this is a pretty basic setup. So if you guys have any recommendations for improvements I could make, leave those in the comments below as well. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.